Well, here we go. Time for semi-final one of the compound men's individual competition. Miguel Piquera of Mexico takes on Mike Schlosser of the Netherlands. Let's go down to the rainy shooting line. Well, introductions done here. Semi-final number one of the men's compound is about to get underway. It's a big ask for this Mexican Miguel Becerra, but he has been through Gerard, Galantine, Hansen to get to the semi-final. Mike Schlosser though, Mr. Perfect, is a different ask. Fabulous start here from the pair of them. Ready. This is an early opening for Mike to uh, to get the lead, and uh, I think Mike functions best when he's in the lead. Ready. And that is a costly shot, I think, because this uh, gives Miguel the idea that it's okay if I shoot a nine every once in a while because he also makes mistakes, so it. It can it can give him some confidence in this match. A lot of pressure on Bethera though. He needs to to win this competition to qualify for the Hyundai Archery World Cup final. Similar lineup uh, story in the second semi-final. JP Bolsher already qualified uh, by ranking, and uh, Jimmy Lutz requiring the win. But uh, interesting, we saw Nico Vino. We can see him. At, in the background here, front row behind the shooting line in the uh, red top, long sleeve top with a cap. And the Austrian has a chance of qualifying, but he needs the results to go his way, right? So if Bihera or Lutz win this, he drops down the rankings and misses out on Mexico. So he's he's basically cheering on Schlosser here. Yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be cheering for either one of the uh, European archers in the in the running still because that's the two that he would like to win or he would like to have take the win. Yeah, nervy moments. Jimmy Lutz as well. Isn't there a story there? Braden Gelantine perhaps uh, could miss out. The superstar could miss out if uh, Lutz makes it through. We'll have to look at the ranking points to confirm that. But uh, there's stories abound here. 29 apiece, though, in this semi-final. Let's get back to the action on the range. In any case, if, uh, if Wiener doesn't... Uh, doesn't get the spot for the World Cup Finals, he at least got a spot at the VIP seating. So uh, he's a winner nonetheless. Oh, his glass half full, Chef Vandenberg. Is it hard for you to commentate on your countrymen? It, it's difficult to not um, root too much for him, um, because obviously I, I try to be not too biased in, the, in my seat right now. Um, but I, I'm, I'm good friends with Mike and, and I've shot with him for so long um, that it's difficult to, uh, uh, to not root for him. Quite understandable too as he gets a 30 to take him to 59. But uh, Vithera also in the same position here. A bit more pressure perhaps. Uh, he's not happy with it but it looks like it's gone in the 10 to me. Why did he give that little grimace then? That was a really good question. <laughs> I wish I knew this uh, this time. 
But I'm happy to see that uh, Mike looks relaxed and he looks calm and he looks like he's having fun. So um, uh, that's typically a sign that things are going well. Um, Becerra is maybe not the uh, the guy that smiles too much during a, during a match, but he did smile when he won the uh, mixed team bronze earlier. Um, and the first smile we saw from him was after the match when he shot the 10 that he needed to take the match. So uh, it might be that he's just uh, he's this, this stone-faced killer uh, on the field. And then, uh, yeah, if he gets the job done, uh, that's when he allows himself to smile. Well, we talked about this, didn't we? The, the, pro the physical process you want to go through, you've got to try and replicate every time. But in terms of mental process, it's, as well as the physical process, it's individual. If you want to be the stone cold killer, really straight eyed, and not give away any emotions and just look serious all the time, if it works for you, that's fine. Yeah, and, and some people see it as hiding emotions, which is, um, it, it can be tiresome and it, it can um, block out the things that you need as well in, a, in an archery match. Um, but yeah, there's also uh, there's something to say for that because you also don't want to have too much emotions go through and 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 uh, um, yeah, let them block out the rational stuff that you need in an archery match. So there's always a fine line of um, um, yeah, how much emotion you want to show to yourself but also to others. Start of the third and both are back in the tens. Both shot 30 in the last end. Perfect score. really high level shooting. They've, they've both shot 1-9, but for the rest, their groups have been really, really small. Two in a row for Schlosser. Bit of movement there. Two in a row though for Miguel Bithera, and there is absolutely nothing between these two. No, it seemed like he wasn't too bothered with that little bit of movement that he had. Um, I think he um, he knows when to, you know, s start extending and, and start making his shot happen. Um, and I don't think he's too bothered by a bit of movement in his side uh, picture. Yeah, I think at, at the level that these shooters are at uh, in the top four of the World Cup, they will know at the instant uh, the release aid goes off or, or you make the release aid goes off, go off because they both shoot a thumb trigger. Um, a little bit of different tactics in, in how they operate them, but they both uh, yeah, have a thumb activated uh, trigger device. Um, they know at the moment uh, the arrow leaves the bow if it's going to be in the 10 or in the 9. Um, so it's just a, it's a matter of uh, having the uh, yeah the right frame of mind to to realize if it's uh, if it's going in or not essentially. Well, they've both been putting it into the center of the target. The start of the fourth end of five, nothing between them. Schlosser to shoot first. The more he piles into the middle of that target, the more that hole in the nine stands out. Yes. Yes. Incredible. He wasn't too happy with the shot. I think it went the the release a went off faster than he uh, would have liked, but uh, luckily his sight was uh, where it should have been. Yes. This is uh, phenomenal shooting from the pair of them. Three in a row for Mike Schlosser. Three perfect 30s. Only one point dropped by the Dutchman. Bit of a longer hold. Only one point dropped by the Mexican. One, one, nine apiece. Three arrows apiece left. This is 
Well, we got used to Mike Schlosser scoring like this, but this is an incredible performance from this young man. Yeah, uh, it is, and uh, it doesn't come out of nowhere. He uh, he just comes off of winning the World Games in Birmingham, uh, uh, USA. Um, so it's not like he suddenly came out of nowhere, but uh, it seems like he's he's really good at dealing with pressure. Also at the World Games, um, I think JP Bulsh uh, was shooting against him in the final. He he put up a th perfect 30 in the last end to put some pressure on uh, Becerra, but uh, he was left unfazed. He just kept on shooting tens and, and clinched the match anyways. So, um, yeah, I think uh, we have a, a silent killer over here. Yeah, rising star for sure. Slosh has talked about some of the issues that he's had, and believe it or not, he even mentioned uh, target panic in the interview, uh, that he's struggling with... Uh, I mean, we talk about the pressure that success brings. Uh, he, his nickname is Mr. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, what Ella is experiencing now, uh, Mike has been dealing with for several years now, and, and it has taken its toll at some point where Mike was affected by some target panic, but I think he's working through it. Uh, speaking of hiding emotions, we just had a, a view of uh, Nico Vina in the background, and uh, he is uh, holding his head in his hands with his, uh, his elbows on his knees, so he's supporting his head. So I think uh, the, the pressure is weighing down on him as well. Start of the fifth, Schluster and Bithera inseparable. So a little bit of a sigh of relief there. So uh, definitely some tension building. Um, I wonder if it's on both sides or only at Mike's side of the line. But <laughs> well, that looked like a, a gulp there from Bithera, so I think it's both sides. It's come down to the final arrow, and it's gone out. You could see the movement from Schlosser. He knew that was going left. So a 10 here for Bithera, and he's into the final. Oh, and he puts it into the nine. It had a feeling of a shoot off this one and that is exactly what happened was that a bit of a quick shot from Bithera? It, it was and I think a bit of a quick reaction because I think he thought that arrow was going to go in, into the tent because he was celebrating already and he was happy walking off the line so uh, even though I said you can feel if an arrow goes into the ten or the nine I think his uh, feeling was a bit um, you know it, it was it was um, smudged by uh, by some nerves there well, what an amazing match, though. I mean, come on, a 148 plays a 148. You don't see that very often. No, and, and it came down to the last arrows. It, this, was, this was the match that we hoped to see, uh, at least. So target face is being uh, refreshed out there, because uh, if this goes to a measure, which uh, well, given what we've seen so far, it could quite likely do, they don't want to be, uh, the judges don't want to be affected by any other holes in the target. They're very, very efficient, they're very quick. It's like a Formula One pit stop, this one. Uh, they swap the targets over. And then one arrow shot per archer, and it's closest to the middle. Yeah, and Mike will shoot this, uh, this shoot off first. So um, he'll be able to uh, uh, have a little bit of pressure, put a little bit of pressure on uh, Becerra, but it's... Yeah. The last shot that Mike shot, you could see that it was not the shot that he likes to make with his... Uh, normally he puts his thumb on the peg, he just keeps pulling and then it goes off. This one you could see that he just made a fist really fast and, and it was like a... Uh, like I was saying before, it was almost like shooting on command, but that's not his style of shooting, so it's not the, the shot that he would like to make. Both affected by the pressure of their 15th arrows. So they'll get to shoot a 16th, one arrow to decide the men's compound semi-final number one, Schlosser to shoot first. Well, there was a lot of movement there just before the arrow went off uh, by his standards. Desera, all he needs to do is get this into the 10. And he's right in the middle of the target. What an amazing win uh, for Miguel Becerra. Winning a shoot-off 10-9 after a formidable match. 148 plays, 148. A warm hug from Mike Schlusser. He's already qualified for the World Cup Finals with two stage wins this season. 
but Miguel Becerra keeps his dream alive here in Medellin.